Alrighty, so Match Week 9 is in the books as I just finished watching the replay of this game between Atlanta United versus the Chicago Fire. And boy, did it end up to be a game that had some late dramas in it to finish off Match Week number 9. But at the same time, it is getting to a point where it is sad and at times even absurd to see the Chicago Fire keep doing this on the road. Like, they keep losing games that they, they should be winning and that this was a game where it was a classic Chicago Fire road game where they play well on the road, they show the effort, but then they make some boneheaded play and some bad luck goes in their way and next thing you know, they walk away with nothing uh, out of this road game. Now, in the first half, uh, Lola Atlanta got the opening goal as Goodman would puts it into the back of that. The problem was uh, the flag was up. Uh, the goal was disallowed because there was an offside on the development of the play. But other than that, that was really kind of the only chance in the first 10 minutes. It was kind of a slow start uh, to this game uh, with no shots for the first 10 minutes. But the first shot of this game ends up into the back of the net. As in the 13th minute, Yakimakis staying hot. Uh, for Atlanta United as he scored here from Lennon and Amada to make it one nothing in favor of Atlanta. And I thought Atlanta continued to dominate the play. They were kind of controlling the game. But I also thought that, you know, besides that one good chance that they had in the 13th minute, they weren't really that clean in the final third. I feel like they could have been a lot cleaner in the final third to create some chances. Though in the 25th minute, the first shot for Chicago did came when Hala Selesi tried to ch Westberg, but he puts it onto the roof of the net before Herbers miss wide from close range. And, you know, I also thought that Atlanta's got to watch out for those turnover. And turnover would be a big story for Atlanta United in this game because they were committing way too many in this one. Like, uh, the, the, most of the chances that the Chicago Fire has in this game up to this point comes from turnover, and that was kind of the case, too, uh, for the rest of the game, where most of these chances for the Fire wasn't because of the fact that they did well in terms of the buildup, but it's because uh, Atlanta just kind of... Uh, give the, the ball to them, and they were able to work on a short field. Now, obviously, some part has to give credit to the Fire, who I thought Ezra Hendrickson did a good job in terms of pressing high and catching uh, Atlanta whenever ever they're trying to play out of the press. But at the same time, there was just so many uncharacteristic mistakes that Atlanta United has in this game in terms of turning the ball over away. And again, uh, the Fire created a couple of good chances out of that. Uh, in the 37th minute, Westbrook had to deny Kamara after, guess what? Another bad tur turnover from Atlanta in their, their own half. Uh, there was a shout for a penalty for Atlanta that was not given before Arujo would puts it high from close range. But we had to have time with Atlanta leading one nothing in this one. But in the second half, uh, this is when Chicago kind of started to over the game a bit. But uh, before that, uh, there was actually a goalkeeping game for Atlanta United at halftime as Clement Diop replaced Quinton Westberg in goal for the second half. Now, what they said is that it appeared that it was a right knee injury that Quinton Westberg has, which is kind of interesting because, you know, heading near the end of the first half, I didn't think Quinton Westberg looked like he, he had a, a knee injury or I don't know when exactly he picked up that that right knee injury because there was no point where I, I saw him maybe collide with a player or kind of down on the ground a bit so that's kind of interesting let's see and you know we don't even know if it's actually uh, if Atlanta is telling the truth because we have seen this before where teams maybe are just saying well it's an injury but there's actually a bit bigger truth in in terms of that so yeah either way as of now it seems like he, he suffered an, a right knee injury and that Clement Diop has to come in for the second half, so Atlanta, again, down to third strain goalkeeper. Once again, injuries, problems continue uh, with, with this team heading into this season with the goalkeeping position. Though, so, uh, in the 48th minute, uh, there was even a bigger scare for Atlanta United fans when they saw their star striker, Yakimakis, went down with a head injury. Now, the good thing is, he did able to continue for a couple of minutes before he was actually a subbed off uh, in the game and you can tell that he actually was okay because just five minutes later he would actually heads one onto the roof of the net and then a couple minutes later he would be be subbed off but yeah you know Mercedes-Benz Stadium was very quiet when Yakimakis went down like you know they know what it feels like see, seeing some of their star player went down with with bad injury la last season and it looks like here we go again it looked like they're going to suffer another injury crisis Though in the 58th minute, Kamara with fires at high on the volley before Brady denied Amada from long range in the 59th minute. But I thought, you know, the next goal, of course, was up for grabs. And I, I said that, you know, this is where Chicago started to take, 
taking over in this game. It kind of didn't really start until like the 60th minute as I thought up to this point. Uh, it was kind of even. The It looks like the next goal is up for grabs because both these teams was getting some decent chances. In fact, the shots were now 8-7 to seven in favor of Atlanta. Uh, Mueller then hits high from close range in the 65th minute before Hala Selesi puts it just wide from close range and again fire they were inching closer like they they really started to kind of dominate the game and Atlanta was started to kind of sit back a little bit too too much I mean not only they have lost control of this game but they most importantly still were turning the ball over uh in their own own half and I think that's kind of the reason why they were just kind of kind of pinned deep and that again we we've seen it before uh in this season and really for for the past couple of years I've always said that you know when you're up one one nothing um, you know, just kind of seizing out the game, just kind of shut up shop and just kind of maybe, maybe bunker a little bit for the last bit. Uh, it might not be a good idea, even if you're at home, because you're basically inviting pressure on your opposition and that, you know, knowing the fact that Atlanta was also being very sloppy in this game, it just didn't look like this was going to work for, for them to just kind of sit in a low block and trying to maybe def defend and hold on to this one nothing lead. Uh, though in the 78th minute, Diop did deny Mueller as the flag, of course, went up. But in the 90th minute, Chicago got their deserved equalizer. And it's Casper Shabelko. That has to feel good for him because he's been kind of been a forgotten man for the fire this season. But he scored here from Gutierrez to tie the game up at one apiece. It was another great game for Brian Gutierrez. And now, you know, for Ezra Henriksen, there's going to be a big problem that he's going to have to 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 solve i mean in some way maybe it's a good problem though it's a problem with the way that you know shikari did uh play in this one but notice how i didn't even mention his name or even put his name on the board yeah he was very ineffective in this game and it is pretty clear that ever since brian grutier has um took over uh that spot that shikari ha has ever since shikari uh went down with an injury Gutierrez has a look, look head and shoulder better than what the spot that Shakiri has. And this does create a big problem for Ezra Henderson because you, know, you want to give your young, young, young uh, kid, kid more chances to start games, but you also don't want to bench uh, Shakiri and that, you know, he, Shakiri is probably not going to be happy uh, uh, about that. And especially with the way the amount that they paid, that could be a very bad look for the, the Chicago fire. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting decision for Ezra Henriksen. The fact that maybe he might have to bet Shakiri because, again, you know, I, I, I'm I not sure if, if this is because Shakiri's just come back from an injury and he doesn't look like himself. But, yeah, he was really poor in, in this game. And Gutierrez come in in this game and he made an instant impact in the same goals for Casper Shabelko. But, obviously, that goal shouldn't have happened if Atlanta didn't turn ball over in their own half i mean you just had a feeling that one of those goals that chicago was going to score is coming from a bad turnover from atlanta and while this was kind of indirect because uh diop did make a good save originally on shabelko and then so somehow uh, uh that he was able to get a second check so that uh that whole sequence of play came because of a bad turnover for atlanta like you knew that they were going to be get burned for that and they finally did uh turning the ball over in a bad area so in the second minute of stoppage time Diop would deny Hala Salisi on the free kick and you can tell that Atlanta really was on the road because Chicago had all the momentum they were pushing for the winner but in the sixth minute of stoppage time Atlanta almost got the winner as Brady would rob Peralta from a point blank effort on the header I mean yeah that was pretty bad set piece defending from the Chicago fire just letting Peralta to wide open there but Brady with a big save there in the sixth minute but then in the ninth minute uh Atlanta would get the winning goal and unfortunately this is just this this is a goal that you can can tell why that the Chicago Fire are probably first right now and just it is a team that is a good example of why they just always have these bad luck on the road where Hala Salisi unfortunately score an own goal and really this was one that was kind of kind of a bad luck for Hala Salisi because I think it was Parata that was try, trying to head it in and it came came off of his back and then it bounced in so it kind of took took a a a, a uh, an unfortunate deflection there but uh, even with that unfortunate deflection again just poor set piece defending from the Chicago Fire like uh, first of all before that ball reached to Peralta uh, Cho was just basically wide open there like there's there was nobody marking him there as he was flicked that one into the the dangerous area and that yeah again just four set piece defending and once again some boneheaded play from the Chicago Fire it's the reason why they walk out of this one with nothing despite the fact that you could say that they were the better team coming out of this game 
Uh, shots in this one, nine shots compared to 12 that Chicago has, five shots on goal compared to four that Atlanta has, seven shots off target compared to four that Atlanta has, uh, one shot to well compared to none that Chicago has in possession-wise, 57% possession compared to 43% possession that the Chicago Fire has in this game. And while this was a win for Atlanta, I'm pretty sure Gonzalo Pineda is not going to be happy. And again, Atlanta, this has started to become a problem again, like what we saw last season, where this is a team that has had that tendency of giving up late late goals and dropping points. I mean, we saw it last week against Toronto. We saw it again this week. Now, they were, they were very lucky, the fact that, you know, they kind of got the bounces in their way, especially late in this one. But, yeah, this game in... In 1-1, one, one, I have a feeling Atlanta fans are not going to be ha happy, especially the performance that they had in the second half where, again, they just, they, 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 they were just sitting back, back deep and allowing all the pressure for the fire to, to, to have and kind of just dictating the, the plays at times and that, yeah. Overall, you know, it wasn't great performance, but, you know, Atlanta will be happy the fact that at least they got all three points, but, you know, for the Chicago fire, again, I'm just getting to a point where I think this team is simply cursed. Like, this team is just... The way that this season ha has gone, this team should easily be one one of the best team in the Eastern Conference and can definitely be a team that should be in the in, in higher in the standings if they don't have these ki kind of moments uh, before. And it's going to be tough to try and to erase the, these kind of moments. I mean, partially it has to be with the mentality because we've seen it before when a team goes through uh, a bit of a... A moment where they just look like they just simply cursed, like what we saw with FC Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Pat Nolan immediately changed that mentality, and you can see Cincinnati is not having those kind of moments like what we've seen before. And that's going to be something that Ezra Henriksen's got to, to do because you know if you have one or two of these kind of games, you you can say it's kind of unfortunate, but this is basically happening on a day, daily, weekly basis, and. Again, I, I got to feel bad for, for Fire fans because it, it, it's got to be very frustrating supporting this team with the way that, you know, this is this is kind of almost the same storyline story where they, this team just always find a way to draw points and, and or lose a, a game even though they look like they were the better team. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of the review of this game. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game. And of course, uh, I'm going to be doing the review of part one after when I finish this video and then part two of course would be be tomorrow uh looking at all the games from match week number nine but like i said definitely this week ends in a bit of a firework in terms of how this game uh turned out but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time